you know what I miss? I miss going around to somebody's house after school and just sitting on their bed and chatting to them about clothes. I would do that all the time. I used to visit my friend Ra. We were best buddies, but her parents moved away. So I used to go and visit her every couple of months. And as soon as I got there, I go and sit on her bed and we just go through her whole wardrobe. And she talked to me about how she felt about the item, where she got it. And I do the same for her. I'm just really missing that silly clothes chat. So if you're also up for that, I'm gonna recreate that today with my favorite thrifted finds ever. And it's just gonna be a chill, good time. I have been a thrifter or a second-hand shopper if you're in the UK uh, for my whole freaking life. At first through financial necessity, then we had a little dalliance, we had a little dalliance in our early 20s and late teens with fast fashion, didn't we Lena? But we're back and we know where it's at, it's with the second-hand gems. I actually really like the term pre-loved. I think it's a bit weird because you don't know if the people before you loved the clothes as much as you do. But I think there's something really special about secondhand stuff. And I think actually the act of shopping secondhand has formed my style. I'm not just going into a shop and being served like five different looks in five different colors by season through manufactured trends. I'm going in and seeing hundreds more items. It's way more stimulating to go into a secondhand shop. And instead of having Having an idea of my perfect ideal woman that I'd like to look like, I go in, I see what's there, and I imagine what I could do with it. So here we are in no particular order. Here are my top 10 ever thrifted finds. And hopefully <coughs> this bug catches and you'll be inspired to go thrifted shopping next time you want something new and snazzy in your wardrobe. The first item is the one that has been with me the longest. I bought this in my university town of Aberystwyth in Wales by the sea for one pound in 2009. It remains in high circulation in my wardrobe. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while, you two aren't strangers. You've seen her so many times before. I think it's the combination of the snazzy color, the oversized fit, so it's fit me at every size, the fact that it looks kind of cool when you wear it off the shoulder, and it is actually surprisingly warm, even though it's quite a loose knit. When I first got it, I thought I was gonna pick off the kind of kitsch gold buttons, but they've really grown on me. It has this kind of rainbow pink tassel detail and I really think a statement oversized cardigan especially if it's in an outlandish color is my staple capsule wardrobe item uh, some people say it's a white shirt or a black blazer this is this is what I believe everybody should have their own spiritual version of it I've wore it camping I've worn it on nights out with a little black dress and I love that when something's been in your wardrobe for a long time it becomes kind of part of your cartoon character outfit like people know you for that item I have so many memories in this with other people and also just alone at the library thinking, will I ever finish my dissertation? A pound, a pa a pound. The second item I also got from a physical charity shop. And I think that something I like about charity shops is that I often have found the best things, not by going to the section that's my size or going to like the section of things I need, like dresses or jumpers, but just going into the shop, doing a general scan and seeing what textures or colors catch my eye. Now this jumper actually doesn't have a fabric label, so I don't know what fiber it's made out of, but what I do know is that it's incredibly breathable. I imagine it's some kind of cotton blend jumper. And for some reason, it just doesn't pill. I'm not really sure why, and I couldn't have known that when I picked it out, but I've had this for years and years and years. You've probably seen it a lot. It goes with my sunflower dungarees perfectly. It goes really well over any skirt or dress because of the way it's cut. And for some reason, again, it stayed vibrant. It's by a brand called Nosy May. No idea who they are. Don't know if it's cheap, don't know if it's expensive, but this is an example of something where if your first instinct is just, I want to stare at that color or that cut all day, then you're probably onto something. This isn't something that I could have dreamt up and been like, do you know what I need? A bright yellow crop jumper in a cotton blend. I think I bought this for about five pounds or something and it's really been worth its weight in gold. 
or canary yellow. Um, I wanted to include this dress because it's a more unusual way of getting an item into your wardrobe. Let me try it on for you. This dress is actually designer steady, I know. Um, it's kind of a full length mesh maxi dress that has this weird digital print that I, it makes me think of flowers, but it's not actually floral. Do you know what I mean? And I love the kind of orangey red accents that I, us I usually will wear like a red lip with it or like something kind of pow, red red shoes a lot of the time. I got this from a rental company that's actually shut down now called On Loan. One day they had a 50% off like renting your clothes thing for a month. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna rent it for a month. And I wore it so much. And I know that they were sometimes doing sales at the end of the year where they were like, oh, we're gonna actually gonna sell off some of these items. I think it cost me 25 pounds to rent with another two dresses or at least another other dress. And I just emailed them at the end of the month really cheekily and was like, look, I'm in love with this dress. <laughs> Is there any way I can get an email notification if you put it on sale at the end of the year or you end up selling it in the end? I know I have to give it back, but is there any chance that you could just tell me? And they were like, actually, this dress isn't rented out that much and we were thinking of putting it in the sale. So do you want it for 40 pounds? And I was like, yes. So what I'm saying is when it comes to rental companies, do watch out because they do have like intermittent sales of the stuff that just isn't in, circulation anymore on their site. Uh, and if you're feeling really cheeky, maybe give them a little email, especially if you're already a customer, because this dress is now mine and it will be mine forever. And I freaking love it. It's kind of like neon gothic. I like that you can see my tattoos through the sleeves. I love the length. I love that I could eat like 10 pizzas in it and I wouldn't feel bloated, but it's also not a big floofy number. It's just one of the best things that I've ever owned and I'm so glad that I stumbled on it and I, I wouldn't have if I wasn't unfollowing all of the people on social media who were like, buy new, buy this, buy that, buy this unsustainable thing. And I was like, I actually wanna follow some rental companies even though I know that's not something that I will consistently need for the rest of my life. I'm just interested in them. So that's, that's, the, that's this example. The next example is this skirt. I got it from a little vintage shop in Amsterdam. In my lives we talked about travel video, I talk about getting fabric or secondhand clothes clothes as your souvenir from that holiday instead of buying something plastic or new. And uh, this is like the only secondhand thing I took home from that holiday and I freaking love it. It's one of those skirts that's flat in the front and then stretchy and forgiving at the back. So it's really comfortable. I think it is genuinely like a vintage item. It does, the label does actually look quite old. And it's also in one of those fabrics that you don't need to iron. It does make me sad that a lot of the kind of newer items that are in secondhand shops just aren't very good quality anymore. And that is a kind of thing where I'm like, oh, maybe like true vintage shopping is good sometimes because you can tell when something's been made really well. But knowing how many other owners and how cheaply these things are acquired, I do often resent the prices of vintage shops. I think this was 25 euros, so maybe like 20 pounds. And I was happy to do it because I was supporting like a small little shop that had just opened and the lady seemed really nice. But again, I don't think that this is the way forward is to price everything like this for secondhand stuff because it's already been sold so many times for money. I don't know how you feel about that. Let me know in the comments below, but I, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, she came home with me. She's vibrant, she's amazing. I love her. This next one I bought for a specific occasion. I was in a Sondheim showcase <laughs> in a local theater near me and I was singing a Mrs. Lovett song and I was like, I have to have the ultimate Mrs. Lovett dress that I can get away with. Because basically when you buy the rights to do something as a showcase, you're not actually allowed to be in costume or anything that looks like costume. I just had to be wearing an evening dress. But I was like, I'll be damned if this isn't a Lovett vibe evening dress. Um, I found this on Vinted for about eight pounds and it's perfect. Let me show, let me show you. Okay, this is she. She's got a big gather at the bottom, some quite Victorian, a little bit poofy sleeves, a pie crust neck. Yes, that is actually what it's called. And I enjoy the synergy with the character, if nothing else. And a kind of keyhole back. This is originally from a fast fashion brand called Girls on Film, I think. And I enjoy it because there's so many items on Vinted that are listed as like worn once or like not worn at all or like tag still in. And it's sad, but it also makes me happy because this is the kind of dress that not only did I buy for a specific occasion but I know because I don't fear daytime sequins that I'm probably going to wear this throughout the winter just like to the library to a coffee shop put a big black baggy jumper over it perfection so what somebody was intending as a one night 
thing, I'm like, <laughs> she'll live forever. This dress I'm not gonna try on for you because I already have some footage of it. You might've seen it in my sewing video, but I'm counting this dress as a secondhand item and I'll tell you for why. Because one of my favorite secondhand items to buy is secondhand duvets, especially in traditionally very expensive and sustainable fabric like linen. Buying linen by the meter is a bitch, but buying it by the duvet cover, actually kind of a bargain. This dress is made from 100% linen duvet cover, and I can probably make about three other or maybe even four other items from the fabric I got from that one duvet, which I think was about 20 pounds. And it was unopened, people. It was, un it was unopened the duvet. So I consider this a massive secondhand win and I was able to make something that's a new garment to me out of something old. So I love it. And I use the DIY Daisy book if anybody's interested. I'll leave the links below. It was very easy. This is literally just made out of two rectangles. I know. This dress I saw as a picture on Vinted and I watched it for ages just being like what is this like at first i bookmarked it because i was like this is a monstrosity and i also couldn't work out whether these flowers were sequins or what the hell was going on and i was like this is an abomination but then the more i looked at it the more i was like but i kind of love it or i kind of think that it has potential and i must know what i'm looking at like is that flowers printed on sequins like what's going on so anyway in the end, I couldn't bear to think of it in landfill. Nobody was buying it for months on end. And I was like, I'm going to have to take the plunge and find out what the hell is going on in number 10. And this is what is going on. It actually is floaty floral fabric and underneath more secret sequins, like a speakeasy of sequins. And it's got this horrifying assault on right angles and symmetry, but just let, just give me a second. I am as confused as you. I think it's a fit. I don't know what the vision was, but I do think it's incredibly Helena Bonham Carter, very unraveled steampunk. There is an ungodly amount of sequins under here and you can kind of see it shimmering through the fabric that I really like. I also like that on this side, it shows my tattoos. I think it might be the way it fits here that makes it okay. Let me know what you think, but I honestly have never been so confused. <laughs> in a good way by how much this experiment paid off. So another thing I like about getting stuff secondhand is that you can take chances on weird things and knowing that nobody else was buying this and knowing that it would go into landfill otherwise, I am so happy. <laughs> that I took it home. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this in the autumn. It's a little bit sweaty for the summer, if I'm honest. But I've already been on a night out in it and I loved it. I loved the intrigue. I love that people did a double take and were like, what, what are you, oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> if fashion is supposed to cause a reaction, then tick, I guess. Sure. Oh my God, why do I look like I'm having a Sandy from Greece moment? The next thing I don't really have that much to say about it, but I do just want to highlight that if you're looking for a raincoat, you should totally get it secondhand. You're gonna get a way better quality one. This is from Jules. Of course it's leopard print, but it is also lined, which a lot of my raincoats in the past haven't been. And I can tell you it makes for a soggy skin situation. I've also never had a raincoat this long and having dry knees is a really underrated <laughs> bonus that I wasn't expecting and I'm sure other people have been experiencing for years without telling me. An elasticated hood and piesta resistance. Pocket on the bum for snacks that also turns into a mac in a sack. I rest my case. I feel like with raincoats, if I was buying new, I'd probably have veered on the safe side and just got a black one. Uh, but because I was spending less on it and I had all these different choices from shopping online secondhand, I could just be like, what if there was a leopard print one? And like experimented a little bit. And the little bit of joy I get from wearing a leopard print Mac when everybody else is wearing black or navy ones is just, it's next level. The next invaluable piece in my wardrobe is my rucksack. I am not a handbag girly. I'm never gonna be a handbag girly. I need two liters of water and two reading options with me at all times. I'm sorry, that's just who I am. But I bought this because I needed to carry my laptop around a lot pre-pandemic and I needed to go to a lot of meetings pre-pandemic. Am I doing either of those 
things now. Not really, but I am going to the library a lot and I was sick of rucksacks just dying on me after a couple of years or a couple of washes. I don't ever really want to buy new leather ever again, but buying secondhand leather is totally fine by me. This is a Doc Martens rucksack. So if it lasts as long as the shoes used to, then I think we're gonna be okay. It's super sturdy. This has carried an ungodly amount of books in the past. And because it's this kind of patent leather, it seems to not be showing any signs of wear. I've seen people with the other kind of leather ones and not to be a bitch, but they look a little bit shabbier than mine. Um, so if you're in the market for a rucksack, just be aware that there's lots of shoe companies that also make bags and I feel like, just a hunch, I just feel like they're better constructed than your average person who makes rucksacks. So this is always gonna be my ride or die and if you're looking for a rucksack that you feel like you could acceptably bring to a meeting or to the office, I would recommend one. The last thing is also uh, a Doc Martens product. These are my granddad's sandals and Doc Martens make loads of different kinds of sandals but these ones, which I hadn't seen very much of and was actively hunting for uh, on Depop, have the same sole as the boots. I know. <laughs> I, ha I do have a pair of foamy ones as well that are really fun, like the platform ones, but they are probably gonna wear down. They're already wearing down. Whereas these have seen at least two summers of just traipsing rounds for miles and miles and the soles just look the same, <laughs> if I'm honest. So I absolutely love these. I got them for 40 pounds, I think, off Depop. They're usually like 150 new. And they're also really wide. My feet, I got my feet measured once and they're size seven breadth ways and size five lengthways so I have um very wide feet but these honestly just feel like an extension of my body I have had Birkenstocks in the past and they have worn out super easily and actually not been very good quality so if you like the look of Birkenstocks and the ethos of Birkenstocks that they're like comfy and not incredibly fashionable but like they go with everything then please get these instead second hand if pass because I already know they're gonna last me a lot longer my Birkenstocks are already in the sandals graveyard I'm not impressed. If this chat has got you excited to buy secondhand, then good. I also have some better news. By buying secondhand, you're extending the life of items that would either go into the ground or into the air. 80% of all of the clothes that get thrown away in the UK get incinerated. They don't even go into the landfill, they get incinerated, which is so awful. <laughs> That's my scientific review of, being, of incinerating clothes and letting all the fumes go into the atmosphere. Awful. <laughs> and frankly, it's not normal. It wasn't even normal in the UK just a few decades ago. And yes, the 1980s was a few decades ago. I won't hear otherwise. We now buy five times more per person in clothes than we did in the 80s. It has become so normal to buy new as default, especially as prices are artificially pushed down by committing things that should be crimes in other countries. And oftentimes, are actually crimes. So hopefully from my showcase of joy-filled items that you saw the glee that it brought me on my face, you'll know that you can be more inventive, find unexpected things, find things that will last longer, find things that are cheaper and make memories and things that will genuinely last forever by buying second hand clothes. You can also reduce your footprint further by getting things delivered to your local post office or news agent. That's an option on Vinted that I really like and it cuts out a lot of the carbon emissions because if you think about it, sending vans to everybody's houses to deliver all of their secondhand finds is also kind of wasteful. If you have somewhere that you, that's walkable to you that you can go and pick it up from, then they just drop off all the packages at once. You can also bring a friend shopping. I think that's a really fun activity. I did that recently in London with my friend Ariel and we had the best time. It is fun shopping in normal high street shops but it's even more fun when you can also like go around the ornaments and the books and have loads of random conversations about things it's just so much more socially stimulating to secondhand shop with somebody i find you can bring secondhand bags with you when you do it so you don't need to pick up a plastic bag to put your treasures in and you can also if you fancy slum it with me on the bus or the train because i don't drive and I probably never will. It's a fair response, but we're passing it off as a moral decision. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are interested in thinking more deeply about your relationship to your own wardrobe and healing it a little bit, I have loads of videos about that on this channel. You're already in the right place, perfect. This video is made possible by The Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. Let me know which of my secondhand finds was your favorite in the comments below and if you found a secondhand gem recently. I wanna hear about it, Frog Snog out.